What's going on, everybody? Welcome to another episode of Opinionated Off Topic. Today, I'm with Carlos Mojica, co-owner and um, co-host of Opinionated Podcast. And we're with Cade, uh, how do you say your last name? Rector? Rector, yep. Yep, we're with Cade Rector. Um, he actually flew out here from, uh, are you from Phoenix or Scottsdale? Phoenix, Phoenix. Okay, yep. so he flew out here from Phoenix, Arizona. Um, super genuine dude. He reached out to me around three months ago. Uh, was going to the Riser event, which was just, they just held it yesterday. Shout out to Matt. And the boys over there, super dope event. Uh, always love going to y'all's events. But Kay hit me up, and, you know, we planned a conversation. We talked on the phone for about 30 minutes. Super genuine dude. Uh, he just started podcasting in his journey with his content creation. And also, he does a lot of fitness stuff. I actually just signed up for your newsletter today, too. Oh, dope. Yeah, yeah so, dope. <laughs> um, but without further ado, I'm going to let Carlos uh, jump it off. So, How'd you find us? Um, honestly, bro, I think it was just through like some mutual friends, uh, came across the riser podcast, I think, uh, a couple other people and just reach out to you guys, bro. I saw you guys were in Austin and you guys had a podcast and you guys seem like, you know, a couple genuine dudes and yeah, man, uh, just kind of started up same kind of thing a few months ago. So my goal this year has been to do a little bit of traveling and to kind of try to connect with some people who are doing similar things. And uh, yeah, bro, so just reach out to you guys. Well, you guys were the first people who I reached out to as far as like doing a podcast. That's with, fire. So, well, I was yeah. going to ask where, did you see other people um, pod, like, yeah, that had podcasts think, as well? I think I, uh, I follow Alex Horm- Hormozy. Mm-hmm. And I think through mm-hmm. that, because I'm trying to think about how I came across. I you, think probably saw, that, you probably saw yeah, Jacob. Yeah, I think Jacob. I saw, yeah, I saw Jacob. Yeah. And then I reached out to him. I was like, oh, you got a cool story, bro. And mm-hmm. then through him. I think I just came across you guys, and yeah. I, honestly, I don't even remember. I just remember I reached out to you guys. I was like, let's do a pod, man. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah, yeah that's yeah. super dope. Here we are. So. Um, so yeah, just tell us a little bit about yourself, your journey. Yeah, you know, bro. So my story pretty much starts um, when I went off to university. Uh, I went to Arizona State for about a year and some change, and uh, not to go too deep into it, but had a little bit of a transformation period during that year. Uh, for me, I realized like staying at school another three or four years. And then going and getting a job, going and working the corporate ladder just wasn't for me. It's never really been for me um, growing up. Like, I never really had a job or a career path that seemed interesting to me at all. And I always, I was I always questioning myself, myself, like, oh, I don't, I don't know, like, I don't know what's wrong with me, blah, blah, blah. So left school. And at that point, I didn't really have anything planned. And so I got into sales, uh, started selling cars, been doing that for about two years now. And sales taught me a lot, bro. That was the best decision I could have made. Um, people skills, communication skills, confidence, all that shit, bro. Um, so I've been doing that for the past two years. And then at, last year, I uh, kind of wanted to get out on my own, start my own thing. And so I got my real estate license and thought I was going to start selling houses. I was already selling cars, so I was like, fuck it, let's sell houses. Yeah. Let's become a millionaire in a few years, let's do it. You know what <laughs> yeah. I'm saying? And that was not the case at all, bro. Did not sell a single house struggled my ass off and uh i realized bro if i ever want to do something on my own if i ever want to be an entrepreneur be successful i have to be willing to market myself brand myself and put myself out there bro and uh that's kind of where the podcast came into play um you know once i got into sales i started you know reading a lot listening to a lot of people like gary v um you guys know who naval is never heard of we him. can talk about that later yeah. but started okay. uh, just you know doing my own research bro um i've always been like a reader um, I've always been somebody who's been like, I'm not really, I was never good at school, but like if I was interested in it, I really put my head into it. And, you know, so anyways, uh, decided I want to figure out a way to like do this online thing, you know, put out some content and do it in a way that I felt like was genuine to me. Um, I was never somebody who I'm not like an entertainer type of person. I'm not going to get on TikTok and do dances and shit like that. So I just tried to like find my own path, bro. And that's kind of the journey I've been on the last few months as far as like wanting to put out content and uh, wanted to try to do my own thing. And so um, that's kind of where the podcast came into play. And it's been cool, bro. It's been an interesting journey. Um, For me, bro, like what I always struggled with is like putting myself out there and like, you know, being being willing to take like the arrows that come with it as far as like putting your ideas out there, putting your perspective Mm -hmm. out there, shit like that. So it's been it's been interesting, bro. And so, um, yeah, kind of just got connected with you guys. And and here we are, man. So that's you know, short summary of yeah. my story for the most part. Yeah. How did you know that you wanted to do like podcasting? Like when did that even like yeah, come into Yeah, the- so as far as the podcast, um, I've always been a huge podcast fan. Mm-hmm. I, I listen to podcasts every single day. Um, listen to a lot of like 
You guys know who Andy Frisell is or any of those yeah, guys? Yeah, I've heard of the name. 75 yeah, days. So, yeah, so yeah, like, yeah, I've always yeah. been a huge yeah. podcast fan, like a huge podcast fan. To me, podcasting is like the future of social, or not the future, but it's just like, to me, it's the it's the best best thing there is as far as like social media, internet. And so I kind of got to a point where I was like, I want to do my own thing. I want to put my, my own message out there, my intent out there. I want to put my, you know, who I am out there. You know, it's, it's, I'm, it's my time to kind of do that, you know? Mm-hmm. You know, just as you age, bro, it's, it's like, at some point you kind of got to start creating instead of consuming. So yeah, for me, podcasting seemed like the thing to do instead of, you know, I couldn't really think of anything else. So yeah, man, that's, that's kind of what led me to want to podcast. And we can talk a little bit about like what my podcast is about and kind of go down that path. Mm-hmm. But, but yeah, that's kind of what got me into podcasting. So. Yeah. That's fire. And what, what is, what is it about? Sorry about that. No, you're, good. you're good. So it's called the real fit podcast stands uh-huh. for real free independent thinking. And so I started researching a lot of like Naval. He talks about productizing yourself. And essentially what that means is you pursue your genuine curiosities and interests and leverage that through social media and the internet and create a career out of it. So for me, bro, I'm into fitness, so real fit, but I'm also into kind of like philosophy, um, you know, thinking about kind of deeper things and stuff like that. So real free independent thinking kind of came into play. The reason why, I guess how that kind of came into play, bro, is my sophomore year of uh, high school, probably the only class that really had any impact on me was my English class that I took. And in that English class, we learned about the Holocaust for a semester. Mm -hmm. And we got to meet survivors and kind of got to go down that whole entire, you know, what happened and everything like that. And it had a huge impact on me, bro. I I questioned like, how is this a possibility? How does something like that happen? Um, Will that happen again? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And COVID happened, and I got to see firsthand, we all kind of did, just how fragile society is and just how, you know, quickly things can change as soon as you instill a little bit of fear into the general population. And just, you know, people got to be able to think for themselves, bro. I think that's just a, a key for a prosperous future. And, you know, if we're all going to kind of figure this life thing out, bro, you got to be able to think for yourself and you can't, you know, fall for propaganda. So, yeah. I mean, that's, that's kind of that's kind of yeah. what it's about, bro. We talk about just whatever, bro. Fitness, uh, life, you know. Is it just you, or you have a? I got I got a buddy of mine who, who does it with me. Um, I've done a couple myself. I don't really enjoy doing it by myself. Yeah, it's no, kind of weird, sure. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it is. <laughs> it's a uh, you know I try to basically so with the podcast. There's really three objectives I have with it. Mm-hmm. Uh, number one is you know pr- build a platform where we can kind of discover the truth, bro. Have have inter- interesting conversations. Um, and uh, yeah, bro. Um, and then number two is I want to bring on like young young men in particular. That's kind of who I'm interested in talking to, like you yeah. guys right here. Yeah. I feel like young men are the backbone of society. Um, we're the heart and soul of every society. We're the ones who get sent out to fight wars. We're the ones who get sent to factories to build, you know, empires. Yep. So we're the ones who, you know, at the end of the day, we're the gate gatekeepers of the truth and the future. And so I want to bring on young men who you know, are interested in having these kind of conversations about society. Not that I have all the answers, bro. Yeah, yeah. I definitely don't, but I want to try to build a platform where I can bring other people on, who I, where I can attract other people to it. Yeah. Um, and obviously that takes time. It's not just going to happen right away, you know. I'm, so, yeah. Uh, and then lastly, bro, build a community out of it. Like I said, I don't want it to be just about me, you know, acting like I have all the answers. I want to be able to build a community around it and to, um, yeah, that's pretty much it, bro. Yeah. How's that process been going for you? Like it, everything, because it's like when you first start, it's just like, wow, I'm about to do this, and then you yeah. do it. But like when you, your first one was it just audio or is it audio video? The first one, I'm trying. The first one was audio, but it was on like a shitty little camera, so I think I deleted the video <laughs> and just kept the audio. You just kept the audio. Yeah. yeah uh, but yeah, bro, it's been it's been a. I mean, I've only been doing it for. F- Four months now. That's a lot longer but, uh, than uh, a yeah, lot of people can say. Yeah, they yeah. say they say if you do more than like three, then you're in like the one percent. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and then if you do twenty, you're like top one percent. Yeah. yeah, so or some I've shit been like that. I've been doing. I think we're twenty episodes in, bro. And hell yeah, it's been you know it's it's been a a, a real growth journey. Um, having to like put your ideas out there and articulate yourself, it's something that like if you're if you're not used to, it's it's hard, bro. It's hard to get on here live and, and put your ideas out there and do it in an articulate way. You know what I'm saying? So it's been a growth, a lot of growth and um, it's been fun, bro. My favorite thing about it is bringing on people who I've never met before. Mm-hmm. Like you guys right here. Yeah, it's super And it's, dope. it's interesting, bro. Like you get yeah. to talk, you get to get to know people. And I feel like with podcasting, like it really is the future to me. Um, I feel like 
if you're going to, like I said, if you're going to go into business for yourself, I don't know why you wouldn't have a podcast. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Because, yeah, t- podcasting to me is just the future. I really think so. And um, it's a lot of knowledge dropped in one hour. <laughs> one plus hour, I should say. Yeah, yeah, yeah exactly, yeah. bro. Um, There's, you know, the long form content, I think a lot of people are drawn to. I think that there's this idea that like people our age are like, you know, we have an attention span of like, I mean, I think it's true. We, we really don't have any attention span, but there's a, definitely a lot of interest in long form content and like mm-hmm. talking about life, bro. That's really all this is, is just talking about life. You know what I'm saying? I'm not the one with all the answers, but the way you find the answers is by talking about it, bro. And uh, that's pretty much it. Yeah, yeah so, exactly. I, I told him. I y'all got to stop we, me. We, no, 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 you're good. good. We were just talking. Yeah, go ahead. I, I told him, I was like, long form will always Oh, 100%. Roll. We're in like a time of like short form content, but... I think people only are on short form because it's what everybody in society is doing. Um, I, our, our attention span is a lot bigger than what it is. It's just we don't allow it to be a lot bigger than what it is. Um, we've been accustomed to watching a 10 second video. I don't have TikToks and I don't, so I don't watch short form at all. Um, it's, it's terrible for you, bro. It really is. Bro, I talk about this all the time. Yeah, it really is. Yeah. I get where he's coming from, but I, I kind of de- like, it depends yeah. on what you're, for me, it depends on what you're watching, what you're, what you're using it for. Yeah. Cause he, yeah. he always like, you don't have like a, uh, like you can't comprehend everything that you watch 30 videos and span of five minutes. So you can't comprehend or digest whatever you watch. I was like, it just kind of depends on what you're watching it for. Yeah. If you're watching it for like, uh, like Alex Ramosi and like Gary V stuff like that, then no. But if you're watching it for straight, like. Uh, just entertainment, entertainment, yeah. comedy, stuff like that, then it's a little bit different. You don't have to like digest yeah, whatever it is true. that you're watching because you're just watching it for entertainment purposes. But the way the algorithm works too on like TikTok and stuff, a lot of the times it's your for you page. And I have like my personal TikTok and then I have like obviously our company TikTok. And like our company TikTok, we do a lot of sports related content. So it's fire. Like when I get on there, I see ideas that me and him can do implement. Um, I see like clips or news talking about other sports and stuff to keep me like up to date. So that's fire. But then when I get on my personal TikTok, it's like everything. It's like fitness, cars, like my interests. Um, like the, the girls pop up on there. It's like a whole bunch of like nonsense for me. So like that's kind of why I straight like straight from it. And then with like long form content, like you. I'll, I love podcasts. Like I probably have like six plus that I rotate throughout the week and I'm just, cause I work from home a lot too. So it helps with just kind of getting through the day. I'm still like learning, but I don't have to focus like a music or whatever. 100%. Like I can kind of tune it out or tune back in. I hear something that I want to hear or whatever, but I think short form is super important and super like beneficial. Cause I was talking to you when you first started, I was like, yeah, keep doing those reels and stuff. Like you got to do that because not everyone can sit down and have the time to consume an hour plus long video, but if you can give them value within that little, you know, 10 second to a minute long clip, maybe they watch enough of those and then it gets them back to your long form, which is what I think it's intended to do. Yeah. But there's also people that, that think like, oh no, like short form only. And I, I don't think that's like, no, I, I was just going to kind of yeah. tag into that, bro. Um, I think the short form content is kind of what, uh, you know, I'm still figuring it out, but this is my perspective on mm-hmm. it. Yeah. Um, I think it's kind of what draws people in, right? The, like, it's kind of hard to, like, go, you know, viral on with long-form content, but the short-form content is kind of what brings people in. You know, you put out, like, a little clip or two, and it's funny, bro. Every, every clip I put out, like, with the, with the little clips, it's like you can always interpret, like, a 15-second clip in a million different ways. So, um, but, yeah, the long-form content is, is definitely cool yeah because one of our uh, good friends that we um his it's called you should know podcast Mm -hmm. um basically what he did was he started on youtube and then went to tiktok built his whole audience on tiktok he has like 1.3 million on tiktok Mm -hmm. and then pushed everything to youtube but uh the way he gets them to stay is he'll give them like a taste of whatever's in that podcast he'll put in a tiktok yeah and then um, I, I don't know, like, what the editing part is on there. So I don't know if he says, like, if you want the rest, go watch a podcast or whatever. Mm-hmm. <clears throat> but Smart. when they go to the podcast, there's – he's able – I mean, at that point, he set the hook. And then when he went through at the podcast, it's the clip, but the whole pod, – not the clip is the whole podcast, but, like, that's basically what you're getting out of the whole podcast is – Stuff that's just right. like the clip. That's yeah. what so I. That's try- how he keeps them engaged. That's what I try to do with mine. I try to like put like the main points. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And try to clip each main point together, mm-hmm. or you know, separately and put up, put them each, put yeah. them each out. So 
I'm yeah. curious. Go ahead. Yeah. I'm curious. I'm curious. How do you go about uh, like clipping and like doing your clips? Because I have like my formula, but I'm just curious to see like how you do yours. Yeah, bro. Um, I try to just go back and and um pick like a couple mm-hmm. you know interesting points that we talk about. I don't like ever like script the podcast. It's okay. kind of just off the cuff. But I'll go back yeah. and try to like skim through it and pick out a couple different mm-hmm. parts that were interesting you. or um, you know a couple maybe funny parts or yeah. just the most interesting parts and put it out there. Yeah, yeah, that's what I do. I I like scribe the podcast from beginning to end. Um, it does work though, cause like we, cause it's not, cause we have an editor basically. So like that's why I just do it and then I put like the scribe notes. What? Oh yeah, Silo follows you actually, or follows your podcast, our boy. But uh. Yeah, anyways, I, like, watch the podcast, I scribe them, and then I send it to uh, to Silo, and then he'll edit it or give it to his editors to do it. And it's more so to help them so they don't got to, like, watch it and shit, mm-hmm. so they can just, like, pick the points they think's interesting and then cut that and put their edit on there. But, um, no, I, I feel you on that because, obviously, you have, like, TikTok and whatnot. And in my opinion, like, TikTok is kind of, like, you can kind of spam on there. Like, you can kind of just post, like, all the time on there. But for, like, Instagram – you kind of want to, you can post a lot, but you do want to keep it a little clean. Like you don't want to, like, we don't post every single clip from each podcast. Like we might get like seven clips made from a podcast, but post like two to three max from the, that podcast, like the best of the best clips on the IG and then TikTok post them all, like, YouTube shorts post them all. So that's, like, that's something I've been trying to learn as far as like, what's the difference between yeah. TikTok, Instagram, YouTube. Um, you know, I'm, like I said, I'm pretty new to this, so I've been trying to learn what the difference is. What do you guys think the main difference is between Instagram and TikTok as far as like the reels I don't and, and know. YouTube shorts? I'm not, I mean. I'm not on social media enough. I just look at it as to post, me, I yeah. post all three because it's three we different audio. Twitter, bro, and that shit doesn't even, sometimes that shit doesn't even get any like traction, but I'm still, we're still posting there. Yeah. But it's just like you know? that one person who saw it on Twitter, probably not going to see it on TikTok. The person who saw it on TikTok is not going to see it on Twitter. So it's three, in my eyes, it's just three different audiences that you're, you're getting views from mm-hmm. um and so it's three different places you can get followers from yeah um how it works i don't know I, it's the algorithm yeah. but i don't know what like i feel like everyone's i just don't know how they push like stuff out yeah i feel like everyone's different um with like what they use obviously like for me my personal favorite social media is like talking to my boy CJ is like probably YouTube and like people forget like YouTube is like a social media. Yeah, like y- YouTube's the you best. get on there like I, that's all I watch. Like I can pick what I want to watch. You know, I can like listen to my podcasts. They obviously have the shorts now so I can watch that type of stuff so I can get my short form. And then I like IG, you know, just I like the pictures and whatnot. But I feel like IG is like the landing page. You know what I'm saying? I agree. And then you can kind of send everybody to your YouTube. Yeah. And, you know, all, all the other pro. And I think so TikTok, cool. I think at one point, TikTok was like what you need to be like pushing. But I feel like it's just a lot harder now um, just because I, I think they made the algorithm a lot harder just due to the fact that I have friends that literally posted like nothing special and they blew up on TikTok and have like 9,000, 10,000 followers from like one video that has like a million views, but it's like not nothing special. Yeah. Now I don't even think that exists now. Like I, I don't think people are blowing up like that off. off For me, bro, um, you know, like I said, I've just st- kind of started this. I, I really try not to focus on yeah. like the, the, vir- the virality of it. Um, I really just try to focus on how can I put out the best Con- the best message, content. the best. How can I serve the people mm-hmm. who are listening to me? That's kind of how I've been trying to really yeah. look at it, bro. I look at it like, okay, if people are gonna listen to me. Um, I don't want to waste their fucking time. That's yeah. just me mm-hmm. personally. Like yeah, I'm not, no like I said, I'm not, I'm not like an entertainer. That's not who I am. Yeah. So I'm not gonna waste my time trying to entertain anybody. I want to try to um, have conversations. I feel like can you know offer value. You know what I'm saying? Like. So that's that's really what I try to focus on. Um, I, it can be discouraging for sure if you try to look at it like, how oh, why am I not you know, how come I don't have a million followers or yeah. you know shit like that. But yeah. you know, at the end of the day, bro, it's like that's you don't want to focus on that. No, you know no. what I'm saying? Podcasting is also very hard to grow organically. Yeah, it, yeah, for sure. Because yeah. I mean, it is a long form, and like yeah. you said, not everybody's just gonna take the time to listen to a whole. I don't know how long yeah. yours are, but typically ours are from anywhere from an hour to hour and a half. Um, no, I'm just going to sit there and watch a whole hour, hour and a half long video, let alone even like 30 minutes. Yeah. yeah. Um, so it's just hard to like truly organically grow a podcast. Well, especially too, because I mean, there's podcasts and there's like podcasts that like full sin, like Nelk, like their podcasts are, it's big because 
of their audience, obviously, but they're getting only crazy ass guests. Yeah. So like you can have like the guests drive your show, or you could have obviously your content, which could be organic, free flowing, um, things like that. Um, but there's all there's all kinds of crazy like ways to like grow it. It's crazy. Yeah, honestly. bro. What I've been trying to do with podcasting as well is like just make it a lifestyle, bro, and not even like not even focus on how many views it gets. Mm-hmm. I mean, I obviously look and obviously I, yeah. I want to do good, you know. I, yeah, like, yeah. I, no I want doubt. people to like it, obviously. But yeah. for me, it's like I plan on doing this the rest of my life. Like good. I plan on podcasting the rest of my life. Um, it's fun to me. Like yeah. I said, I like having these conversations. I feel like I've grown a lot. So it's just as much about like me growing as anything yeah. else. You know what I'm and saying? And it's like, and I also, not yeah, to interrupt no, you, no, bro, good, but bro. like I look at it too, like, damn, in 10 years, I could look back yeah, and like, be like damn, to. like this was me when I was 23. It's bro. all this, documentation, bro. Yeah, it's it, crazy. And that's the key right there. Uh, I listened to Gary Vee talk about that. And I think that is brilliant as far as like, don't try to create. You're just documenting, bro. I'm just documenting my life. I hope one day my kids can look back at this and be like, ah, oh, shit, that was pops back in the day. Like, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. So, like, that's that's kind of how I look at it, bro. It's it, Like I said, it, I'm sure it can be, you, know, you guys have been doing this longer than me, but I'm sure it can be discouraging. And I oh, think for I sure. think for younger kids, too, like, they, they get too caught up in, like, the virality and yeah. you know obviously everybody wants to be famous nowadays right so you know it's it's just kind of the way the world is but but yeah I don't think I ever got discouraged from views um I think if I have or not I don't think so uh I might have like thought like damn I thought that video would be like would have done better but I never like got like man like this sucks it's only got yeah. like this many views uh I just because at the end of the day, like, I love doing it and I'm gonna do it regardless, of whatever That's they all say that or not. Yeah, um, so I've, I've never really gotten yeah. discouraged from like what anyone said or if we didn't get the views. Mm-hmm. That's good, yeah, yeah. I think for me, like, I never really gotten discouraged either from views. I'm just like super, super competitive by nature. So, like, if I see someone else posting stuff, I'm just like, I'm just trying to beat their numbers type deal. But it's not, and that's just from like playing sports and stuff, but it's not like it's not where I'm just like, damn, bro, like, we. We spent eight, 12 hours on this video. We got like 10 views or whatever. Cause we all, we knew when we started this, it was gonna be a long journey. It's gonna take a while to grow. And honestly, it's impressive to hear you saying that cause you're just now starting and you know it's gonna take, a, obviously, yes, anything can happen at any given moment, but you know, like it will take some time to really get, get it to where you want it to be. And you're okay with that. Cause a lot of people aren't like you, we've had people we know or have seen start podcasts and they're like, Oh, that's great. Good for them. But they will like shoot a couple episodes and then stop. And then in my mind, every time that happens, I kind of feel like they were just like, Oh, like this is going to blow up, blow up and take off. They don't really understand the time and what it takes to do it. And that's why they stop. I think the people that keep going like us are like, they know like what it takes. They know it's a grind. Yeah, bro. Um, I truly don't look at this whole podcasting thing, content thing as a competition at yeah. all, bro. I really don't. I don't think that that's, I think that it's just the wrong way to approach yeah. it. I think it really comes down to just being yourself, bro, mm-hmm. and documenting yourself and being real, being genuine and enjoying it, bro. And, and it's not a competition, bro. Mm-hmm. Like, I'm not in a competition with you guys. Yeah, no I'm doubt. not in a competition with anybody, bro. Yeah, I'm, that's good. You, like, there's a quote that I really like by Naval. It says, escape competition through authenticity. And I think it's true, bro. I just think, be yourself, man. At the end of the day, like, we're here for a short period of time. So enjoy life, bro. Document the process. Hopefully you can help people along the way. That's my goal with it, and just keep it at that, bro. Whether whether this gets a hundred thousand views or a hundred mm-hmm. views, it really doesn't matter. I'm gonna enjoy it the same way either way. So yeah. So earlier you mentioned the ball, and you just brought him up, and you said you're gonna talk about him a little later. I've never heard of him. I mean, I've heard of Gary V and Alex Ramosi, and then mm-hmm. um, I don't listen to the other guy he talked. He brought up, but uh, he's brought up the guy who made the 75 Days Hard. Who is who's Naval? Um, so basically, he's just like a business. Who's Naval, and what does he mean to you? Um, I mean, I don't know him personally, but he's just a yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a I don't know, just a businessman. He, he uh, puts out a lot of content on Twitter, and he has a book called The Almanac of Naval. And mm-hmm. basically, bro, um, he talks a lot about using leveraging. He talks a lot about leverage and how there's four different kinds of leverage. There's coding, there's uh, capital, which is money, there's mm-hmm. labor, which is people, and there's media. And media and coding are both permissionless, permissionless leverage, where you don't need permission from anybody to use. And um, 
when you look at somebody like, um, I'm trying to think of something, like Mr. Beast, when you look at somebody like Jeff Bezos, um, it's not that they necessarily work harder than, I mean, they work hard, obviously, but what separates them and what makes them so successful is they know how to leverage their work. And so um, Naval talks a lot about that, a lot about leveraging, a lot about utilizing the internet. He also talks a lot about authenticity and how that can, that's everybody's greatest asset, bro, because at the end of the day, and what's brilliant about media is if you can use your greatest asset, which is authenticity, and leverage that on the internet, which is what we're doing right now, that's how you build an empire. So um, yeah, bro, um, he talks a lot about basically creating content and, and making a career out of it. A lot of it's similar to Gary Vee, but check it out, bro. Check out Naval. Check out the Almanac, Almanac of Naval. I listened yeah. to the audio book on my way here. Oh, yeah. Um, but yeah, to, it's, it's a lot of cool, a lot of cool shit, bro. So yeah. I've been listening to that, and it definitely, I started listening to that when I started podcasting because I, you know, just started digging into different things. But it's interesting. That's dope. Yeah, yeah, I, I've never heard of it. Never, one. neither. Yeah. Have I, yeah. No, that's dope. Um, it would help you guys out with the podcast, bro. Like you, it's just a good, some good information to kind of soak in. I I need to be better at watching slash listening to podcasts. Um, Audio books are where it's at. I'm bro. not a. I'm 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 not on YouTube like I I mean it, even though we do this and like all of our friends do content, um, it sucks to say that I just don't watch YouTube like that's not my my um, form of content or like what I put in the background for white noise. Um, it used to be it just I don't know I just kind of grew out of it and I used to listen to I wouldn't say I used to listen to podcasts all the time because it was really only one, um, but I need to when because he like you say he watches podcasts all the time and I walk in. Whatever he's I always watching. have different it's, ones. Yeah, on. yeah. They're, they're typically good. Um, and mm-hmm. then we're both ex athletes, so like, mm-hmm. um, have you busting with the boys? Is that was busting with the boys is like one of my favorites. That, but that's the one, right? The, where they're on the bus, where they're sitting on the bus yeah. and shit. Okay, yeah. I didn't want to get it mixed up with the one, with the YouTube channel. Those frat guys. Oh, boys in ninety eight. Oh uh, yeah. yeah. Uh, but busting with the boys, the pivot, um, and then. Uh, when they were a thing, uh, I am athlete. I, I am athlete. Oh, so yeah, stuff yeah, like that. Yeah. Um, like I, I enjoyed those and, and listening to those, but I I just never I need to be better at. Yeah, and 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 just getting into it. Talking about the Naval thing, it, like it kind of ties into what you guys are doing. You guys are really mm. into sports. That's yeah. I can clearly you know see it. You guys are really passionate about it, and mm. you guys are you guys are doing exactly what you should do as far as like. Let, um, you know, taking advantage of that and just mm-hmm. be yourself, bro, and talk about sports, talk about whatever it is you would talk about off camera and talk about it on here, bro. Mm-hmm. And, you know, it's, it's cool, man. I like it. I like your guys' vibe. It's, it's cool, you. bro. Yeah, you guys got a cool setup, man. So Appreciate you. Appreciate you. Uh, did you yeah. play any sports growing up or anything? Yeah, I played uh, tons of sports, man. I have a kind of an interesting story with sports. Uh, grew up, That's all, that was my life. Yep. It was sports. That was mm-hmm. everything. I played yeah. all kinds of sports. Football was my main sport. Oh, yeah. And, um, yeah, sports taught me a lot, bro. Taught me a lot about failure. Taught, taught, taught me a lot about um, – overcoming that you know what i'm saying so when i got into high school uh like my junior year bro i quit football quit sports quit everything and uh kind of just went down the wrong path nothing too crazy but you know just partying a lot drinking a lot and um you know it it taught me a lot that you know like that's not what life is about you know what i'm saying Mm -hmm. and uh at the end of the day what what makes me most fulfilled is like trying to pursue my ultimate potential bro Mm -hmm. so uh yeah bro sports has always been something i've been not as passionate about it anymore, but like the the lessons that I le- yeah. I've learned from sports, bro. I think that if you're a kid from age like five to twenty, like you should play sports, bro. You should play some kind of sport. Mm-hmm. Um, I think there's a lot of lessons learned in it, learned in it, and especially something like football, something that's really physical. Um, yeah, sports are amazing. You man. learn a lot about yourself from yeah. sports. Um, Sports is, I'm starting to, if you, at least if you played, I mean, maybe high school, depending on the person, but at least if you played college ball, sports is like a double-edged sword because it's like, all you know is sports. What sports teaches you, all accountability, um, mm-hmm. how, how to lose, how, how to lose. handle a loss, how to handle a win, That's how huge. to win. It teaches you all kinds of stuff. Mm-hmm. Um, it teaches you about yourself. and But when you go to college and you play college football like he did, after that, it's like, over yeah, yeah well, I, what what uh, I don't know what to we, do. We all go through that, man. I don't know what and to do. Maybe it's yeah. not even sports, but we I think everybody like growing up goes through that in some way, shape, or form. Where mm-hmm. you know w- what you grow up doing, you know you the, your it. passions and stuff like that. It's, it's not gonna last forever, yeah. and you got to find a new path. So it, it's not for well for that. It's not even necessarily your passion. It's like you graduate your four years and you don't go to the NFL, you don't go to the NBA, whatever the pro is for your sport. 
um, and then you it's just done. So it's like all I know is football, football, mm-hmm. football, baseball, 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 and now it's done because I graduated. But I all I know is how to do that. I don't know anything else. And, so and that's that, why I said it's like a double edged sword because yeah. there's no there's no one to teach you post sports. Yeah, and that's I feel like that's like a a big thing that's not really talked about because I mean you learn all this stuff but you also don't learn how to live yeah life after that no yeah. I think it's super interesting like that you touched on that because I mean he, he brought up the podcast to me probably like my junior year at college mm-hmm. yeah that's when we got more serious about it I brought it up your freshman year but we got more serious about it your junior yeah. senior year yeah that's true but I say like junior year because that's when we started like talking about like, what are we gonna call it like like yeah. all that stuff and uh you know. It was one of those things where I was like, yeah, you know, sounds good. Like, let's wait till I get out of school because we never wanted to do it. Like, no, we're not opposed to doing it through Zoom if it's like we have to. Yeah, I won't do it but on Zoom. Like, no, it's, I mean, just, it's just not like it's not the same. when I, I tell people, no, no disrespect. If you do it on Zoom or Discord, whatever you do it on, no yeah. disrespect to y'all. Like, that, it, everything's professional at the end of the day. Like, yeah. whoever's talking, that's where the professionalism yeah. and comes. You can make it look good. And you can make it look good. With cameras and shit. Yeah. But we just decided to go this route because... Yeah. I feel like even listening is not the same, though. Like Because of sound distortion? No, nah, not even that, bro. It's, there's something about, like, being in somebody's presence. Yes. The connection aspect yeah. of it, bro. It's not yeah. the same on Zoom. Like For sure. And I don't really give a shit if someone's mad at me saying that. Like, yeah. it's no, just, no, it's, 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 it's true. No, it's true. It's not the um, same, it's just, bro. It's more engaging, more sentimental like this. Yeah, yeah bro. I mean, it's just... Yeah. It's like text somebody you know yeah, like or yeah. email like you might someone call, might, yeah they're gonna tell you something then but it's like the rhetoric you know what i mean yeah. it's different yeah. but sorry to cut you off nah, you're good um just you know we didn't want to do it that way and we decided to go about it a certain way and when we got back um it started off as primarily sports based but me and carlos have a bunch of interests and we don't want to just be catered to sports we still make sports videos we like he just literally shot a ufc video yesterday um but it, we just kind of, at least for him, he kind of always had the idea, like, I want to be, I use these as lack of a better term, but like a bar stool, a complex, like a corporation, but more so a place where you're one-stop shop. You can get everything here. Like, you can get that type of content, but you also get I had the same experience. The off-topics and this type of engagement that we like to do. And eventually, we want to have people work for opinionated media and they do like the sports videos and stuff for that. And me and Carlos just show up for this. And then we do like, obviously the business and all that other stuff we want to do. But, um, the challenges of playing a sport, like, or playing a sport and then post playing the sport growing up as a young adult. Cause right now, like I'm like fully immersed. Like this is like my second passion after football, but I was listening to, uh, somebody talk about it. Uh, I don't remember, but they were saying that it needs to be some kind of, uh, integrated like course for athletes. I think I might have been talking to Carlos, like just some kind of integrated course for athletes. Well, I, I brought that up on when we we're in Dallas. That's right. When we were all shooting, when we were talking to Matt. Mm-hmm. Yeah, there needs to be some kind of integrated course for because we have a lot. I have a lot of friends that played sports that are doing kind of similar stuff, like content creation or they're starting a business or whatever, which is kind of crazy. Like I think that's the like you were saying, like the younger generation is kind of what we're doing. Um, it's the future, man. It's the future, but. Yeah. No, I, I just really think, like, there needs to be some kind of integrated something to kind of teach you because you can't just, like, I don't know. Like, there's a lot of people that literally, like, their only way of making it in life was being great at this sport, and they might get cut short or they might not play long enough in the NFL or whatever, and now, injured. They're, now they're injured and now they're stuck with, like, dang, I don't really want to go back to school and finish my degree or I have this degree, but I'm not even passionate about what I'm about to be doing with yeah. this degree. So it's, it's definitely like super like interesting, like how, like, like he said, sports can teach you so many life lessons, but if you're not, you're, we're not programmed to have a fallback plan. So I like how you guys brought up uh, being like a one-stop shop and not just being sports. Uh, for me, when I, so about a year ago, I started putting out content and started mm-hmm. just like posting my workouts, basically. That's yeah. all I would post. And um, after about like a few months of that, I realized, because, you know, I've always been like into like the YouTube space on with mm-hmm. fitness, like the fitness yeah. YouTube space or whatever. And I realized like the fitness space is very one dimensional. A lot mm-hmm. of fitness like influencers, mm-hmm. very one dimensional. It's like, OK, you post your workouts, you post your protein cupcakes mm-hmm. and bullshit like that. And uh, for me, I kind of wanted to go down a different path. You know, I'm very passionate about fitness. 
but that's not my life. You know what I'm saying? And mm-hmm. like, I think it kind of gets old. It kind of gets boring after a certain point. It's like, yeah, no yep. one cares about your. You get labeled proteins. as someone too, like yeah, that you're like, not. You know, like are, I you, know, are right. you trying to go like more of like a Bradley <clears throat> Bradley Martin type route? I'm not trying to go anybody's route, bro. I'm just trying to go down like well, what just I, like the like not because because yeah, I feel like Bradley. I mean, everything you said, but that's not what Bradley does. He's more of like just for me, bro. I just think like in general. Um, I think with content in general, or just, I don't know, in general, bro, like everybody's multidimensional, yeah. you know what I'm saying? Yeah, like nobody no. just, you know, cookie no. cutter. And yeah. I think that that's like the new, this the new, um, it's the future, bro. Like the, the old, our old, like our parents' generation, as far as like going to school and checking that box, so to speak, you know, getting your degree and going working for some company is like, mm-hmm. it's kind of like the past, you know yeah, what I'm saying? Yeah, it's definitely dying. It's, it's, it's a dying yeah. thing, you know what I'm saying? Like nobody, that's not the future. Like you got to figure out a way to like, pick this interest, pick that interest, pick this, pick that interest and put it all together and, and mm. create your own thing, bro. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. that's kind of what I've been trying to well, do. And I like cr- how you guys talk. You about know, it. what's crazy is like, there is like, obviously like there's people that are like going to school, get their degree, get a great job. And like, they do that. And then there's obviously like, there's nothing, anything wrong no, with yeah, that. that. No, but yeah. I'm just saying for me, like you gotta, yeah, yeah. You, it's self-awareness. Yeah. Bro. You gotta know where everybody's different. Yeah. I'm, everybody's, I'm, I'm like you, I, I, I'm not a college person. I went for, Two weeks and I was done. That was it. That's all I needed to do. I was like, no, this is not for me. Um, just, ca- just it's good to have yeah. that self awareness, man. Yeah, so, I mean, no. it's, it's just not for some people. No, yeah, it's one of those things where what I was what I was about to say. It's like one of those things where people do do that, and that's fine. And there's people that like are like do what because I mean, I went to school, but that's still not my aspiration just to do that forever. You know what I'm saying? But what's crazy is you can kind of see like the robotic nature. I was talking to him about this, like nothing, nothing, nothing against people that do this, but just people work nine to five Monday through Friday, whatever. Then the weekend hits, they're out partying or, you know, living their life, which is great. Live your life, live your life, like do your thing. But there's also people like us, like we're going to Dallas and we're going to, we shot seven podcasts in two days and we're not making money from that yet. But it's one of those things where, it's just a kind of headspace you're in because, you know, people people are going to be, like, looking at us and be like, oh, they're just, like, doing this and this. And then we're looking at them and they're like, oh, they're just partying and doing this. But everyone has their own level of happiness engaging that. And that's kind of what I've always told him about. It's like, man, it's crazy. Like, not everyone is made to do this, what we're doing. And we're also not made to do that and just live in this robotic life, you know, do the same thing. There's no one size again. fits all. Exactly. It's, cra- shit, it's crazy, like, mm-hmm. to see it, like – Every dynamic is right in a way, but it's crazy to just see like the differences of stuff. It's 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 super interesting. Yeah, I think a lot of people like a lot of people. I feel like because I, I work, I have a job. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, so yeah. A lot of people, you know, they're frustrated with their job, mm-hmm. and they let that frustration kind of just ruin them. And then yeah. they go on the weekends, party, mm-hmm. drink, and and it's like they're they're hustling backwards, bro. You know what I'm saying? If you're not mm-hmm. happy with your job, it doesn't make too much sense to go spend all the time outside of your job, fucking it's, off, and then. You know, you got to go back and make the money to, you know what I'm saying? So yeah, yeah. it's like, I don't know, man. One of the guys we had on the podcast this past weekend, he, I never really thought about it like that until he said it, but you can't fill a void with a void. Exactly. I was like, when he said that, I was like, you're right. No, like, yeah, that's what they're doing. You can't fill a void with a void. Mm-hmm. It's a good way to put it, because bro, for sure. If you drink, like, if you go home, you're like, man, I hate my job. Life sucks. I need a beer. Yeah, for real. Void. You're just filling a void with a void. Yeah. It's a black hole, man. Yeah. There's yeah. no fulfillment in any of that shit, bro. No. Trust me, and I've been there, too. I've been the guy who, you know, whenever I'm bored, let's go party, let's go drink. Bro. Same. Yeah. It's it's just a downward cycle, yeah. bro, for real. So. Yeah. So I've, I've never, I've been, I've always looked at it as, like, you're wasting money type thing. So I've never really went out. Um. So I was, but even then, that's still, like, Teach their own, it's, yeah. Because uh, yeah. uh, I can go and buy a seventy dollar game, and like, why, why, why'd you buy that? So that's a waste of money. Yeah. Everybody just thinks of well. And as far as like the al- as far as the alcohol thing, bro, and the partying, it's it's one of those things where I I sympathize with people because it's it's actively pressed down on us. If you know what I'm saying, mm-hmm. like any social event you go to, mm-hmm. any sports game you watch, mm-hmm. what's on the commercials? It's Budweiser, it's beer. Yeah. And so, bro, the shit's, that. It's, it's pressed down onto us, bro. So it's like, it's hard to escape. It's hard to like- Happy get, hour for work. Like, yeah, all it's that. everywhere, yeah. bro. And it, like, as soon as you kind of wake up to that and you start realizing just how much it's it's pushed onto people, um, like, unless you, like, if you don't see it like that, bro, if you don't see it quite that, in that way, then it's hard to escape that 
you know, that, that, that environment. So, yeah. I mean, I, I was just talking to him about that before I went to Dallas. I don't remember exactly what I said, but that was pretty much, I don't know if you can remember, but that was pretty much the gist yeah, of the it. Gist. Yeah, we were yeah. talking about a lot, a lot lately, a lot of the stuff we talked about before that trip, we've been talking to people about on the pod. It's been kind of crazy. Yeah. 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 But I mean, it's just, uh, I, I don't know if I said going out or just alcohol in general. So like popularized that it's like, if you're not doing it, you're wrong, I guess, so to say. Yeah, but it's one of those things where people look at you a certain way because you're like, I mean, I have friends and I'm like, oh, I'm not drinking. Or they're like, oh, I'm not drinking. People are like, oh, really? Well, you're not drinking? They, they like kind of outcast you. You just got to be real careful about the circle you hang out that with, too. bro. That's, I mean, that's your environment is everything, that bro. Too. I read a book called uh, Atomic Habits, I think. That's a really good book. I, I think it was Atomic too. Habits. Yeah. And he talks about like how to build successful habits. Yeah. And at the foundation of successful habits is your environment, bro. Mm -hmm. Like, I mean, you know, if, I, if I'm a drinker and I'm surrounded by people who are drinking all the time, mm -hmm. like I'm not going to stop drinking, bro. Yeah. Like, it's just not going to happen. Yeah. So, yeah, your environment is everything, bro. So, yeah. I had a question. I was thinking about how like you seem very, very mature for your age and stuff. And then obviously you're going down this path of, you know, making content for yourself and, you know, doing things the way you want to do it. Has that been like hard to like for your like I guess your other friends or, or like are you like lose have you lost friends or like um, do they not understand? I keep a pretty tight circle, bro. Okay. Um, I got a couple friends that I really fuck with. Mm -hmm. I don't know if you're allowed to cuss on here. No, bro. yeah, do your thing, bro. Yeah. <laughs> um, I keep a pretty tight circle, bro. Yeah, yeah. So I don't know, man. I, I'm kind of like a lone wolf. Like I like okay. I like chilling by myself. I like. I came out here to, to Austin by myself. Yeah, you know I know. I was like, so, yeah, that shit's like, crazy. Like, I don't know, bro. I don't yeah. I don't really give too much. Um, I don't know. Yeah, I mean, it's been a, it's been yeah. interesting, bro, but Cause not, like, it hasn't I, been too difficult with that. Because, like, at, I don't know. when I, I'm just thinking about when I was, like, 22, and, the like, when you look on, at least on your phone or whatever, like, that's what everyone's doing because you're young. You just turned 21 around that age. Like, you're just, like, going out, partying, single, whatever. So that was just, I was just curious to yeah, hear your perspective and, on and that. And if you remember, I, I talked about like a transformation period. Yeah, uh, that's right. When I was went to university, mm -hmm. I can dive into this. This yeah. is really where everything. So when I was in high school, bro, like my junior, senior year, I was completely in that environment. Right. And I kind of got over it a little bit. I was like, all right, like this isn't, you know, there's nothing here for me. Right. So I went to university and before I went to university, I, I was nervous, but I was like, damn, I don't know if I'm gonna be smart enough for this shit. Like, I don't know if I'm a be good enough right and mm -hmm. i got there and i was like damn like everybody just wants to party like the it was just mind blowing ASU how, too. bro how yeah. like bro <laughs> it was my <laughs> ASU, it was mind blowing just how like degenerate like the whole environment yeah. was yeah. bro and i was like this is not this is nothing he like why am i here bro i'm just here what spending all this money just to go party with these jackasses bro like yeah, no doubt. so yeah bro i went through a real transformation period and um it was hard. That that was a hard time for me, bro, because I had no direction, bro. I don't come from like a entrepreneurial family, like yeah. school, like everything was go to school, yeah, go to school, I feel you. go to school, <laughs> yeah. So like when I yeah. decided not to go to school, that was a big deal, bro. Yeah. And uh, after I made that decision, I got more comfortable with just following what I'm trying to do, mm -hmm. bro. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And uh, I think that's the key. I think you know I don't know the keys of life yet, but I think for me, like where I'm at. That's the key is just following your intuition, following what feels right to you, following your heart. You know what I'm saying? And uh, I, I use like an analogy is like um, imagine two people who move into a city and one has a GPS and one doesn't. Mm -hmm. The one who has a GPS is going to have it a lot easier to begin with. Mm -hmm. Right. But the one who doesn't have a GPS, they're going to fuck up. They're going to fuck up. They're going to fuck up. Mm -hmm. Eventually, they're going to know the city by hand mm -hmm. and they're going to know it by heart. They're not going to need the GPS. And the GPS is just like um, society's programming, basically. Yeah. yeah. So it's like, bro, if you follow your heart, if you follow your intuition, it's going to be difficult at first, but eventually on the other side, you start to just figure mm -hmm. things out and things start falling into place. Yeah. And it's weird, bro, how things just kind of fall into place. As long as you keep putting your foot forward, your, you know, put one foot in front of the other, like with this podcasting thing, I, I never had the intention of starting a podcast, but you know, after I got into sales, after I got my real estate license, then I was like podcast and like things just kind of, yeah, things yeah. just kind of work out, bro. Mm -hmm. yeah. As long as you, you know, I'm, I'm I mean, I believe in God as long as you, yeah. you know, do the, feel yeah. like you're doing the right thing, put one foot in front of the other, things just fall into place, bro. So, yeah, that's... No, that's, <laughs> yeah. no, that's, that's good. Uh, how'd you hear about the Riser event? Um, like I said, came, bro... You came it, here alone and it was for the Riser event, correct? Yeah, yeah. Well, yeah. So, I actually, I had a job opportunity out here in Austin like a few months ago. 
And I was going to take it, but I'd never been to Austin before. Mm -hmm. So I was like, eh, that's probably not not the best decision. So I've been meaning to come out to Austin. Mm -hmm. And I think just through, like I said, just through like mutual friends, I followed Alex Hermosi and then I saw this person, that person, and I came across Riser and I came across you guys. So, you know what I'm saying? Like it just kind of- Like a chain. I don't know, bro. Yeah, just kind of- What drew you to wanting to go to the Riser podcast? Because like we're friends with them. So like they just tell us and we already right. like no. So like we don't- Yeah, I mean- so ever see any of the social media or any of that. So ever since I started a podcast, I really use Instagram to mm -hmm. like kind of- reach out to people, um, you know, see like, you know, what's kind of, what's going on and try to connect with other people. So like, yeah, I just kind of came across it, bro. I don't know. Like I didn't, I don't know, just kind of came across it. And uh, I saw that it was a lot of entrepreneurs, a lot of creatives, a lot of thinkers. Um, so that's kind of my forte. So. Was that the same place we went to last time? Yeah, it's a high brow, low brow. Okay. Yeah. Um, Did you have fun? Really cool, man. Yeah, Austin is bro, Austin's Austin's, Austin's dope. Great. Yeah, he, like, he, he was like he, he, Austin's great. I, I grew, like I've never yeah. really left Phoenix, so like this is one of the first cities I've been to, and it's it's cool, bro. I, it's, like I, I was I've been the last two days just been walking this downtown area. Yeah, um, yeah, been meeting a lot of people, man. So it's cool. I, it's I cool. think too. I t I tell Carlos all the time. I'm like, because there's a lot of people that have moved here, but I always tell Carlos, I'm like, I think a lot of people are gonna move here, and then they're gonna be here from like I don't know, like 20 to like probably 30. 35 maybe and then they're gonna probably leave but i think for people like us that are starting stuff i think it's like the best place you can be they got top e out here too, yeah huh? yeah yeah <laughs> Elon. oh oh no, Elon. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah but like yeah. no i just think it's like the best place you can be from just like there's fact my brother just worked on his house anyways continue. Oh, yeah. <laughs> that's crazy um but like the entrepreneur side of things and just um the community connection because like i don't know bro it's it's literally crazy to me. Like every time we meet someone, I'm like, damn, bro, they're doing this shit in Austin. Like, I just feel like it's like where you need to be. Cause it's not like LA and it's not like, you know, New York and even our friends that live in Phoenix. Like they say, like, it's a lot of like clout chasing, like you're doing things for the wrong reasons. I don't know if like that's the, your interpretation of like being from there and stuff, but that's what I've heard at least. Like, yeah, I don't, I don't know. Man, yeah, honestly. I don't know. Like <laughs> just from like work, working well, with people and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I Phoenix. Like I could probably see that. Cause like, I mean, it's not, I mean, Phoenix isn't like, I mean, I guess it's a big name, um, but like at least in New York and LA, like I feel like they're more for whatever, if we're trying to, they're just snobby people. Yeah. So like, like culture. Yeah. Thing. They just, not that they don't want everybody to eat or like want their friends to eat, but I just kind of like the vibe I get from like those two cities, LA it's, and New bro, York. It's that, it's that famine mentality. I'm telling you, bro, yeah. it's, it's the competition, like competition is real, obviously, but yeah. like when you get into a mindset of everything's a competition. Yeah. It's just a dangerous. I don't know, man. I don't think it's a recipe for success. No, I think yeah. collaboration is really like exactly. what's what's lacking. Because I just feel like so many people are afraid to work with each other because they're like, "Oh man, he's taking my audience or he's taking my my clients or whatever." And I'm just like, "Man, no!" Like that's the whole purpose of it. Like you, you can learn how to work together. Like, work together. So many you ideas so off much of each together. other. And I like, think it just comes down to perspective, bro. Yeah. Like yeah. for me, I, I think about just like. Bro, life is short, man. Like yeah. mm -hmm. we're gonna be gone soon before we know. Like I'm already mm -hmm. 22. It feels like damn. Like, yeah, same. I turned 26 yesterday. I was and like, it's Fuck. like, bro, I'm not. Don't spend your time <laughs> worrying about that bullshit. You yeah, know what I'm saying? Like, bro, just it's not that serious, man. It's like not. it's really not. Like whether like it's the whole. I'm just kind of starting content and podcasting. Mm -hmm. It's like to me, it's I don't even want anything to do with any of that shit, bro. As yeah. far as like, oh, this person, that person, it's like. Fuck all that. You yeah. Know? Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. I'm glad you like Austin. It's, it is it's a fun cool. place it's to cool. be, yeah. um, especially for, I say from the ages 21, like at least for uh, yeah. being able to go out, being so. able to go out and stuff. 21, I'd say like, I would say like 40. I don't know. Well, yeah, for sure. 40. Yeah, yeah for I'd sure. Say like 21 to 40. Yeah. Are you guys, um, you guys are both from here? Yeah. yeah. Born and raised. Born and I wasn't born here, but I was raised here. Man, you guys got to come out to Phoenix. I'm the, I'm the only Austinite because she's from uh, Dallas, Fort Worth. He's from Vegas. And he's from Virginia Beach. Yeah. I'm the only Austinite. So I've seen like from nothing to Austinite. That's, that's yeah. what it is. Yeah, that's what it's called. Yeah, that's what yeah, it's yeah, called. When you're yeah. from Austin, you're called an Austinite. I don't even know what Phoenix is, bro. Phoenix, Phoenixian. Oh, the song. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I think Austin's a place to be. Like he said, there's just, there's so, so much opportunity here. I think I'm going to move out here, bro. To the be cities. <laughs> if this, you do, hey, yeah. is, we won't get it. It popping. seems busy. It's only going to get busier. The city's growing stupidly. We've been the fastest growing city for like the last six years. Yeah, and then like that, if you because you were telling me that about moving out here, and I was like, bro, if you do it, like now let's get shit going. Now is the time to do it because I couldn't even tell you. I would say even six from six months from now, 
it's going to get more expensive and busier than what it is now. Yeah, dude, Phoenix, Phoenix has blown up as well. Yeah, yeah, it has. A lot of people are moving there. It's like the second big. Yeah, bro, and then it's blowing up. Nashville, it's like the, Nashville, I think, Phoenix. I think the and, home prices have like doubled in the past like three years. It's insane. Stars, bro. Yeah, it's, it's, insane. it's been, for here, it's been more than that. But um, even now, my one of our other good friends uh, lives in uh, Phoenix as well. And um, he said that there's projected to be over a million people in downtown this weekend because mm-hmm. of the, the golf tournament and the and the Super Bowl. Mm-hmm. And then wow. he sent me like a picture of all the like after parties, and there's like two page fulls of like all just the different after parties with rappers and different just music artists in general. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy out there yeah. for sure. Yeah. yeah. Who do you guys got in the Super Bowl? Uh, I got I the, hate Eagles, the Eagles. Unfortunately, I'm a fan, well, we're, on a, so. we're on a sports show. Uh, yeah. Sports show, bro. Like, nah, let's talk nah. about it. I got the Eagles. Unfortunately. Uh, well, not unfortunately. I, I feel like, you want them I feel to like win. the Eagles are the team, bro. Like they got yeah, the they're best. Just, they're just top. he wants them. I'm an OU fan. He wants yeah, them. Bro, they're te- they're, they got a stacked. Stack. And I called it in the beginning of the year too. I said I think I said the same shit. Yeah, yeah. You know what? I I mean I'll probably get heat for it. I don't care because I honestly believe it. And you know how I am with the Cowboys. I honestly believe that if we would have won that 49er game, we would have beat the Eagles and beat the Super Bowl. I don't think we would have won the Super Bowl. Yeah. Uh, I don't think we would have beat the Chiefs, but I think our matchup against the Eagles would just we we just did, we, did the Cowboys beat them? We went once? one and one, so okay, we yeah. we lost them the first game um, because that's when Dak got hurt and he was out, and then we beat them the second time. Um, Man, Dak, I feel like Dak blew that game to be honest with you. Oh, uh, it's the 49ers? Yeah. Bro. Oh yeah, for sure. I mean, come on, bro. Like. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Get that man off my team. That's yeah. what I'm gonna say. Hey. That. The thing is, I don't like Dallas. I like the Jets. Yes, you do. I like the Jets, he's but a which is gross. So a lot of people. No. But he's a he, he's a he's a he's Dallas a, he, is. He got a lot. Of, all 32 teams are his team. No, don't we'll relax. But uh, one of those guys. Nah, 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 yeah, nah, yeah, nah, yeah, nah, yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah. yeah. But that man over here <laughs> retweeting Bill stuff and saying, "Let's go, Bill." I like Stephon Diggs my going to the Jets and cheering on the Jets, and he got Cowboy stuff. Like, yeah, I just he's everywhere. I don't. Hate Dallas like I used to, because they have a lot of players that I like. Like the team, they have a lot of players I like. I don't know. It's You're just, a players guy. You like players. Yeah, yeah, that and then I don't know. I do like the Jets because I like because I play corner, so I like Darrell Revis. That's why I like the Jets. And now they got like another Darrell Revis. They got Sauce and and then Garrett Wilson played with my brother at Lake Travis, and he's from Austin. So like that's super fire. Like he's he plays for the Jets and shit. So that's cool but i mean yeah probably the eagles bro i just think the team top to bottom i just think they're better and then obviously it depends on how healthy mahomes is and the chiefs receivers because this man was throwing to like practice squad players <laughs> yeah. and i don't think you can do that when because the, the eagles got that they got some some dbs they got Darius Slay. The, the, the DBs and linemen yeah, so. but that's the thing is like even it's, even with mahomes injured you still he just showed us you still can't bet against for him. sure yeah for sure i was actually listening to uh they have a good podcast, Travis Kelsey and his brother called uh, New Heights. I was listening to the episode with Mahomes on it, and his yeah. brother's in the league too, right? They're yeah. both in the they're league. But the one plays on the Eagles, one plays on the Chiefs. Oh, yeah. Travis plays on the Chiefs, okay. and then the other one plays Jason the plays for yeah, the, right. the Eagles. Yeah. He's a center. Yeah, yeah, that's dope. crazy. Yeah. That's, that shit's dope. Uh, I was uh, talking to somebody and uh, been talking about this a lot, uh, but with him, uh, I'm, I was like, I'm not gonna let my kids. I, I don't know if I'll let want my kids to play football. I'll let them play football. I don't know if I want them to. Yeah, that's just a, because. I'm not a very big person, and then whoever I have kids with, if they're not a very big person, my kids aren't going to be big. But the yeah. talent level that it's going to is just ridiculous. Yeah, all sports, bro. It's, I mean, but it's like, crazy. But, like, you, you have them two. Like, you have both of them. Both of your kids are in the NFL. Your genes are ridiculous. Bosa. Both Bosa's. The bo- the they're, Bosa's. They're, they're, they're the genes. They're they're ridiculous. Yeah, yeah. They have both your kids in the NFL. It's crazy, bro. The NBA is wild, bro. Like, I mean, all sports. Like, yeah, I feel all like sports. The gener- just, like the, yeah. the talent level is going. Are through you the guys roof. follow like MMA a lot? Or I do. Yeah, I do. Okay. Yeah, Maybe. you guys um, like the- Sean O'Malley. That's, I like Sean O'Malley. <laughs> <laughs> he's got. Yeah. He, I, I, I fuck I got, with him. He's, I got, out, he's out in Phoenix, I, I, so like, I, I, it's, it's okay, dope, it like, makes sense. Out there, you know, yeah. he's, I, he's kind of like making a, his own little scene out there. I so just fuck so. with him from like a because I got called a hater. I like multiple times because on my UFC yeah, podcast because I, I like talk Connor shit about him. and I like Sean O'Malley because yeah, I like similar. I like what they do for the sport. It's marketing, bro. Yeah, that's what I like. He's good at yeah, but it's cool. He's out in Phoenix, so it's like it's cool kind of seeing like that. You know, I think. For me, I, I've caught, I followed Connor from the beginning, but Connor kind of Connor. This is it's hard to say because he didn't set the way, but he set the way in a way. But Connor set the way to like how to promote yourself. But 
Nate Diaz has always been doing that. Mm-hmm. There was just something about Connor. I don't know what it was that Irish, people just gravitated yeah. to, but Nate Diaz was doing the same thing, bro. Some people talking shit. Some people just have that it factor. I, I, it. You, I you just, can't it, you can't really put it into words. It, I feel like I think that's just you see it in certain athletes. No, for sure. You know what I'm saying like like, Joel, o, like, Jordan, like Odell, like, Mike, like they're just he like they they're it. He, Nate Diaz was doing the same thing. Like he didn't care where you were if you were talking shit. He was gonna he was down to fight you right. Like he that he was the Conor McGregor, like as in like the way he uh, uh, carries himself before Conor McGregor, and that's why. One of the uh, when he fought Nate Diaz the first time, the post fight press conference, uh, not that fight, but a fight that Nate was fighting. He was like, I want you because you're you took everything I've been working for and all this and that because that's how Nate was. Mm. But Connor just kind of set that like he's fighting the, later this year, right? Connor, yeah, yeah, he's fighting Michael Chandler. Um, yeah. he kind of just like set the blueprint of like how to market yourself because now everybody acts like that, yeah. Um, it used to be like more classy, huh? It used to be yeah. more classy. Um, but going back to Sean O'Malley, I just look at him as like a because I'm a, I'm a big I love UFC I I, I love it and I've been following yeah, it for I'm a the, long I'm the same time. Way. I'm the same I've been way. following it for a long time. So I just look at him as like a um, a media fighter or a popularity fighter. Like the people who like you don't really watch UFC. They just they see what they see, and so like you have all these fans. But they're just fans mm-hmm. of you and not really the UFC. And, and he also has but, like one because they strategically like place him. I feel like to win too, so he can like build his brand. I I, I did. Uh, he did gain a lot of respect out of me after this past fight when he popped Peter Yan because that was either I think Peter won, but his striking in that fight was really really good. Yeah, bro. I don't think. Excuse me. I don't think he'll be able to hang with uh, Ajame Sterling, who's the champion. Uh, just because I don't think he has a very good ground game, but if anybody toe to toe, he he can strike with them. Yeah, I was always a, a football guy for the most part, like growing up. But mm-hmm. recently, like I feel like UFC just there's nothing else like a UFC fight. You know, like, it's just it's a it's on a different level as far as like the entertainment aspect mm-hmm. of it. Um, yeah, it's it, UFC's and you get shit. like we were talking about this too because we were talking about like sports, I guess in general. Like, we were talking about like F one because uh, he's basically saying like how he's like kind of falling out of sports like due to the COVID year. And I do agree with that. Like, why y'all like UFC is so popular is because you get the card and you know exactly what you're getting that day. You can prepare for that card so you can know to take off or do whatever you got to do to watch that. And it's not like like NBA, any of these other sports where you got to watch like multiple games, some at the same time. You know what I mean? You get to watch it all in one sitting. So mm-hmm. I feel like that's like a yeah. So it's like thing. UFC. Every single fight's inside the octagon. If I'm watching baseball, football, basketball. I'm only watching my team. That's I'm only watching the Cowboys when the Cowboys play. I'm only watching the Longhorns when the Longhorns play. I'm only going to watch the Rangers if I'm watching baseball when the Rangers play. And I'm only going to watch the Spurs if I'm watching basketball when the Spurs play. I'm not I'm not trying to watch the Giants and Eagles play and flip to another channel and then watch the Rams and Falcons play and flip to another channel and the Patriots and Jets play and flip to another channel. Stuff like that. Yeah, it's a lot. It's just like UFC, I don't have to do that. It's all in there. F1. It's all one race. They're all in the same place. Mm-hmm. So I've just, ever since COVID, I've just kind of fallen. I still like sports and I still watch them. It's just, I don't watch them like I used to. Yeah, I'm the Unless same Unless it's F1 yeah. or UFC. Yeah, I, I used to be like super into sports, bro. Lately, I, I, I'm i not as into it. Um, but yeah, so. Yeah, the <laughs> F1 and UFC, the only like two sports I like keep up with. Keep yeah, up same with. here, bro. UFC is really And then the only... just my teams. Yeah, yeah, I feel you, bro. I'm the same yeah. kind of way. Yeah, but yeah. No, I, love, I love, love. Have you ever thought about uh, not I, competing? But I've done a little bit of training. Yeah. I, I want to get in. I want to like really get into it. Mm-hmm. Um, like I'm mainly like in like weight li- like weight training and stuff. Body like I got really into bodybuilding for at one point. Mm-hmm. Uh, but yeah, I want to get into like some jujitsu or something like that. It's a lot. It's expensive. It's worth it. Um, but you won't. You don't need a gym membership after that because that that is your gym. Basically, because you get you still get your weightlifting in if you're just rolling on the ground with somebody. Um, weightlifting or just from, with somebody, yeah. but you also they also have weights there for you to weightlift yeah, as well. Yeah. Um, but they got a couple big gyms out yeah. in Phoenix though. Like yeah, they do. MMA lab. They do. Uh, there's a couple other ones I think. Uh, but. Yeah, we drove by one. I'm pretty sure when we were out there. Yeah, but I think I'm pretty sure they have a UFC gym out there yeah. too. Yeah, yeah, I think so too. Um, yeah. yeah. 
then they have some big gyms. Um, I just learned that there's a few uh, fighters on the UFC roster that train at uh, it's called uh, Tenth Planet. But there's that, there's yeah. there's two Tenth Planets here, and then there's one that people can go to, and there's one that not anybody can just go to. Mm-hmm. That's like the ones where the, like the UFC fighters are and everything. Mm-hmm. But no, I I, I want to get. I used to a long time ago, but I want to get back into what it. What you used to train? Jiu Jitsu, uh, Brazilian okay. Jiu Jitsu. Yeah. Um, but I, I'll probably go back to. Brazilian Jiu Jitsu. Next time um, I link up with you guys, bro, I want to have like a, a blue belt or something. That'd be dope. That'd be dope. Yeah. That'd be fire. Yeah. That'd be fire. Yeah. That'd be yeah. fire. I'm gonna try to. I'm trying to think, bro. I'm gonna try to come out here maybe like at the end of this year. Yeah. Something mm-hmm. like that. So let let us know because we're trying to plan something. Well, maybe I can have you guys. If on. you can come out, if you can, I know it's hard, but it's summertime. Yeah. Just because what's the weather, the weather out here like? Nah, the weather here sucks. Man. That's the it's only, hot as fuck, but there's would, a lot to do. I would do. say the only bad thing about oh, Austin. I mean, yeah, bro. I'm yeah, from, yeah, no, 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 no. Just because it's like <laughs> you only get two seasons here. It's winter, and it's if the winter's long, and if the winter's cold, and then summer. That's like it. There's no in between. And then right now, it, and if it's the winter's either like fall winter or it's fucking cold yeah like how it's just kind of been it was um, cold it was cold bro it was cold yesterday or two days ago when i first got here i was like shit i didn't know it was gonna be this cold yeah i didn't bring yeah, a jacket just, or just anything. ice last week bro yeah just yeah. ice here last week but it, you'll get like random stuff like that and then like yesterday i think it was like in the 70s and i was like what the hell and then yeah. like tomorrow phoenix is real similar yeah phoenix and then the, the summer just it's just hot as hell but you're from phoenix so yeah but yeah, yeah the summer just hot as hell but those are only two seasons just winter and summer i kind of I, I enjoy the heat bro like i i'd like to do like like outdoor cardio during the heat and you just sweat bro and you get like all this i like getting in the sun yeah. i don't know i just i no, like i, I like the heat, heat. Like if, the heat if you can squeeze in a little trip um Summertime, I would just to yeah. experience it. Um, have you guys been to like Houston? Have you guys been to Houston? Yeah, I have yeah, a yeah. lot of friends there. I've been wanting yeah. to check out Houston as well. Yeah, I have a lot of friends there just I, from college. I personally think Austin's a better Austin's city, the, so I don't. Know. Austin's for sure the better <laughs> city, but if I if I had to live anywhere it's, else, I would live in Houston just because I have friends there. Mm. And yeah, I would probably choose Dallas over Houston. Yeah. Houston's too crowded for me. Yeah. Dallas is getting that way too. So is Austin, but Houston's like really yeah. crowded. I just don't. I don't. I just don't like the how people act in Dallas personally. Yeah. But that's why like I, I don't yeah. but I mean all the, I feel like Austin's just like best city and it's also the center. So like you can go to Dallas, you can go to Houston, you go right. to San Antonio. I noticed that, and yeah. they're like not far. So yeah. you want to get in the car and like go like I've never I moved to Austin. I, I want to go check out Houston this weekend. It's easy. Yeah. You know that's I mean? a good point. That's Do good you uh, drink at all or anything? Uh, yeah it, I, I just had a, every like I, I, I drink a little bit here just, and there. Yeah. I had I had some a couple drinks yesterday. Yeah, like uh um uh, what's it called? Uh, the, oh what what like a, when you drink with like socials yeah thank you <laughs> yeah, social drinking yeah thank I, you sir I'll, I'll drink here or there bro yeah. um because i'm the same way as you i don't i don't really drink but i was gonna say if you come down the summer uh if it's uh, it should still be there um but rainy mm, rainy rainy is really, think someone told me about that yeah, yeah I, I probably did because i was, yeah, I was maybe, giving you yeah, just a yeah. lit yeah rainy is really fun Rainy is dope. It's not the same how it used to be. There used to be like two other bars there, but now they're like kind of building it up because just they're building up like uh, skyscrapers there, which I don't know why people are moving there because you can't see because you're like all built. You're like just, this. I mean, you're downtown, but you're downtown and whatnot. But best, super, super fun, like good, like day drinking vibe, like watching sports. Um, there's a place called Bangers. You get a mimosa. It's like a thirty dollar drink but it's a whole bottle of champagne and orange juice so it's have it's you guys been bit. out to scottsdale at all yep. scottsdale, uh, we went, scottsdale yeah has a we just cool. didn't go out though we like i know old town and like yeah, all that shit. yeah scottsdale yeah. has a pretty cool scene like yeah. we, if you guys come out there we should definitely no we didn't go to scottsdale we went to tempe we did go there to no, eat yes we did wasn't, oh yeah what's up yeah, yeah, yeah we did yeah, go there yeah, yeah, yeah. with all those yeah. damn cars yeah, were yeah. on that road we went to scottsdale <laughs> uh, i don't even remember the name of the place those that was good no, I mean I, I like Scottsdale nice. for sure. Yeah. Like, Scottsdale is the place to be in, in like in Phoenix. I feel is it like. small? I feel like it was small. Um, yeah, I mean it's I don't Kinda. know. I don't know. It depends on what you consider. I just because well, I just felt I just felt like all the places are just kind of close to each other. It's definitely like the nicest place out in yeah. In Phoenix, yeah, but we sure. we drove to that one bar because uh, do you know who Mike is the artist? I was gonna ask you about uh, him. You probably you would probably fuck with him just because like the way you are like he like has a podcast called uh you should know. Or not, you should, no, know. You should know. My bad. Y and K. Sim, uh, you never know. Oh, okay. <laughs> you should know. <laughs> but Y and K. Shout out the boys over Shout there. Shout out to the boys, though. Uh, but uh, Y and K, you never know. And uh, he also makes music. Like, very, very, 
vibey, good, like makes you feel good music. Like when you get a chance, go listen to the highest, one of my favorite albums ever. Um, sure. He likes it. For sure. But yeah, album. anyways, he he like makes like very like the content, bro. Like the way like he like just talks about like life and shit. It's just very like personable. And Those real. are my favorite conversations, like, bro. Yeah, you should you should you should check him yeah. out, bro. I feel like yeah. he would fuck with him because he has a lot of podcasts that are just him sitting in front of the camera. Does he do it by himself? Yeah, at all? he he has a few times because he does this thing where he like lives nomadically. Like he'll like live in different towns for like That's X amount of time. So like when he was in Montana for like four months after tour, he like was just up there and he was just shooting content to like interact with his fans and shit by himself. Bro, t- touring has to be like. Bro, that's what he was saying, though, because he was just like. paid to go just travel and partying, basically. But he also said, like, how draining it was, too, because he, 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 because I guess, like, prior, he was known by Mike Studd, and he just made a bunch of that type of music and was just, like, going hard forever. So he said, coming off of COVID, rebranding and all that stuff, he was like, you're you're drinking on stage and stuff. He's like, I don't want to do that shit after anymore, you know? Mm -hmm. So it's, it's I feel like he's, like, the perfect like example of like evolution of like a young man. Like you yeah. go through like you go through like the low or not the lows, but you go through like obviously the drinking, partying, whatever. You might be in a serious relationship. You go through the breakup aspects and then like you kind of mature and get a little wiser and then you kind of figure out like what you want in life and then you start trying to like go in a certain direction and then obviously guide people if you want, you know. So yeah. I definitely think it's someone you should check out though. Yeah, like, for sure. Yeah. Send me his uh Yeah, his I got one. you. I'll send you a shit. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um one last, one last I guess kind of two last things for me, but uh goals going forward um just with your podcast yeah. and you in general. Yeah, um I want to build a podcast out, bro. I want to get to the point where I can start like attracting people to it mm-hmm. instead of like having to reach out to people. Um, so that's definitely a huge goal of mine. Um, and then just, you know, just keep growing, bro, financially, you know, I want to grow financially, uh, get to the point where I could start investing in real estate, have my real estate license. So I kind of know a little bit about real estate. So I want to kind of get more into that. And, uh, honestly, bro, I just want to do some more traveling, uh, kind of keep doing what, what I'm doing right now, as far as like connecting with other people. Um, you know, having conversations like this is just so cool to me, bro. It's, it's really a, an honor to be here, bro. And it's a, a blessing, bro, just to be able to like interact with people, bro. I feel like in today's world, we're so connected on on one end, but on the other end, we're like so disconnected, bro, yep. with the technology aspect of things. So, um, yeah, bro, just keep growing, man. I mean, at the end of the day, it's like, it's all you can do, man. Like, I try to, you know, you, you want to have goals, long-term goals and everything like that. But on one hand, you got to be present, appreciate the moment, win the day, you know what I'm saying? Focus yep. on. So that's that's really just keep growing, bro. But yeah, I got some a couple of different goals I'm working on. Nice. Yeah. What about you guys? Um, what about if, you guys? Uh... You can go for it. Go ahead. Oh, I'll just say if you move here, uh, I mean, obviously I, I th- you want to travel and all that, but if you move here, you'll you'll meet a lot of dope people and a lot of dope people from everywhere across. I would say the world. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm like ninety percent sure yeah. certain within probably like the next year. So, or so you'll you'll, you'll meet a lot of dope people here, and they're not. They won't. I guarantee you, majority of people now that you'll meet will not be from Austin. Yeah. So, um, but uh, goals with this, um, I have more. I guess business goals with this yeah, for more sure. than I have growing goals with it. Obviously, I want to grow it because um, growing's key. But we're just at a point I feel like that we just have to start making um, business moves to keep the when when the growing's growing to keep it growing and just to be able to do stuff to keep the audience entertained as well. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Um, so Ch- I have a lot of business goals for us that I want to yeah. I want to do because we have our LOC. Um, we have a website made, but it's not really. I mean, it's rolled out, but it's not rolled out right now. It's down because we just we. Uh, there's no really for us. There's no purpose of keeping it keeping up, right, it up now right now until we get everything else. I feel like yeah, I, I'm yeah. the same way. I started up a website for for Real Fit Media, but it's like I don't really need it right now. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then I just I, I want to land. It doesn't even have to be big. Just some kind of longer term sponsorship or partnership or whatever mm-hmm. um, for us uh, to help keep bringing in revenue yeah. or just to help bring a new audience stuff like that yeah. um yeah. so that's my goal awesome that's awesome bro. yeah for me um very similar um we started uh, opinionated thread so we're going to start getting our merch rolling out we're just trying to figure out what makes the most sense doing it the right okay. way um a lot of people put out merch but we want to just we we storytell we are good with content so we want to kind of have that resemble the clothing 
And then, like you said, business goals, um, starting to learn more of the business side of things. I mean, we've had a few people on that like have like pretty intricate like business models and startups. So just kind of learning from them, seeing what works for them. Um, we want to get into a studio probably hopefully end of this year, if not end of this year, be at least beginning of the next year, just cause you'll make it happen. We're getting exactly. And we're getting older and it's just like, we want to just have a spot that's separated from home. You yeah. go there, shoot, shoot our content. That'd be obviously fire. have a place for like people like you or whoever to come interact, like your family, like you pull up and you can edit something, you can kick it, whatever. We want to have that ability for everyone, but yeah, you uh, guys just, will make it happen. just working towards that. Cause I mean, um, we, we just, we just have been shooting here for a while. We just feel like we got to keep ev evolutionizing cause we do want to do this full time at some point. So we don't want to be stagnant and, just do the same stuff. Like last year we were super consistent, recorded every week, posted all the time. And now I talked to, uh, cause CJ is also a co-owner of opinion media. And we just talked to all three of them. And I was like, Hey, like this year, like, let's be pretty purposeful with what we do. Like we need to like, like plan what we're going to do. Like, don't just make content just to make it like make it purposeful so it can do something for us and each other. So, we got a lot of stuff planned, man. We got some cool stuff in the works. Um, we want to maybe throw some kind of event at the end of the year. We met a lot of artists, so we're just trying to figure out how to make it make sense. But if you don't come down in the summer to kick it, definitely pull up for that, or we can try to schedule something. And absolutely, you know, yeah. Uh, the, I mean, I knew he was gonna say, it, but the 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 um, getting a space is it's probably like the number one. Yeah, for I'm sure. Trying to, I'm trying to do the same thing. Uh, not that it's not. You lose. I mean, you do lose in a way motivation to like do this because then we wake up. We wake up to it. We walk out of our rooms. It's here. We see it all the time. But obviously, we haven't lost the motivation to do it because we're still doing it. We still go to Dallas and shoot seven podcasts and whatnot. But it's just, I don't know. It's more motivating to like, oh, I get to go to the studio and go yeah, it's work fire, bro. and do it's this, yeah. um, and then it's just refreshing to go home and not see it. Yeah, it's just nice because like, if you want to go home and edit some more, you can do that. But from the luxury of your house, you like you don't have. We like you said, just always out here, always doing stuff, and then we also have a lot of foot traffic, so it's hard to keep it clean and shit because we're just always having people in and out shooting content. Like we shoot on uh, Wednesday, CJ and his group they shoot on Tuesday, and then like we shoot norm, like we're shooting on a Thursday. Like it really doesn't matter. We'll shoot whenever, but it's just like, are you guys doing one a week or how many are you guys doing? Like typically, like typically recording for wise, yeah, yeah. So it just it kind of depends. The rest of this month and pretty much all of next month, we're double booked. So Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday, Wednesday, Thursday. Um, but typically, it's once a week. Uh, we shoot every Wednesday. I, uh, It's something I've been meaning to talk to him about, but I think we need to start shooting more than once a week. Not for necessarily sure. oh, for podcast, sure. but just different content yeah. to put out different days of the week. Because we did the once a week, and we showed ourselves that we can do the once a week. We're consistent. Yeah. We can do it. We did it a whole year. So you guys are trying to do some other content. Well, we kind of have. I mean, I've shot on my own a lot. Uh, I'll just pick random because I'll do like a lot of sports stuff on my own, like college football and stuff like that. And I'll just shoot those in my room um, on random days whenever I have the time. Um, and like he shot yesterday, but we definitely need to get like more of a game plan. Like we need to like probably have a structure, like shoot podcasts on Wednesdays, and then maybe on Monday have like a meeting for business and like actually do those and like talk through everything like all right this is what kind of content we want to release this week this is what kind of business like other house cleaning items we need to do because i feel like if we do it like that and we get on the schedule and then maybe like another day like a thursday we shoot like me and him shoot some short form or we shoot something else just to like you know just have it um but i feel like we can get in that schedule two to three days of working on it because obviously you need to work on it every day for at least a little bit of time, but just having like set days. Cause like I said, we're trying to plan all this stuff, but we need to all like be on the same page and like talk through things and make sure we're, you know, doing it the right way and not like, well, I want to do this, but we haven't even talked about it. You know what I mean? So I will say you guys got a good chemistry, man. It's, it's dope you. to see you guys like kind of yeah. working together um, yeah. for me. Like it's mainly just me. So it's cool to see like you guys have a team and it's, it's really cool to see, bro. bro so. it's, it's super cool. I mean, I think we, when we went to Dallas, um, CJ, like, we've done content with him, and uh, he was, like, one of our first guests back in the day before, like, we even knew, like, how serious we all wanted to do this, take it, but uh, CJ co-hosted uh, Six Out of Seven podcasts in Dallas, did a phenomenal job, and we had Alex and Zay there and Kat there, and, like, it was super dope because everyone was working together 
and just having that available because none of them, nobody has to do that, especially when you're not making money, you're spending money to go there and do this, but it's cool that everyone kind of has that vision and everyone believes in it. So I think that's just Absolutely, something man. that once you get those team, team members and even just meet people like you, like if you do end up moving out here, just having that, that group of that synergy of like-minded people, I think it goes a long way because you never know, like, that's what's about just helping each other and doing it together. So. Yeah, one thing for me, bro, is I, I think it comes down to having the right people. Mm-hmm. And um, instead of like having an opportunity and trying to find the right people, you try to find the right people and give them the opportunity. Yeah, you know what exactly. I'm saying? That's kind of exactly. how I look at it. Exactly. So, like, when I saw you guys, I saw a couple of your videos. I was like, oh, these dudes are look genuine, look like good people. So, that's, yeah, to right, me, yeah. that's I mean, it's our slogan. We're bringing creative dreams to life. Yes, sir. That's our slogan. Yes, sir. Yeah, and then another big thing for me, I guess this year is I'm a I'm a big gamer. That's what that's what I do. Because uh, I I I actually got injured uh, playing baseball, so that's kind of where my, I took my competitiveness was like gaming. Um, but I'm a big gamer. But I wanna I gotta figure out uh, how to way to implement gaming into our content since I do it so much. I just this year I gotta figure out to do something of that sort. I just don't know what it is yet. Um, but that's like another another mm-hmm. goal of mine. That's awesome, man. Yeah. yeah. No. Um, but oh, go ahead. Quick thing too, like I'll, I've kind of thought about this, but like we do do content. A lot of us do content, but also I think it's very important to find like uh, what that balance of not trying to make everything you do like content. Yeah. Because yeah, yeah, I feel sure. like if you do that, you're gonna. I don't know. I, are, I'm not explaining it, but you you got you gotta like definitely find some balance. Like let's so say like he it, I don't I thought of that because he does like gaming and stuff, but I also told him like you obviously have to you need to make it make sense at a certain point, but mm-hmm. definitely like don't ruin that passion or that decompression you get from doing something. That's kind of what I was saying earlier, bro. Is like obviously you want to take it serious, but you also kind of like don't take it too serious. You know what um, I'm saying? Yeah. Like at the end of the day. It's, Social media, internet, like it's it's not real life. Because you know I think you're gonna burn yourself out too. I mean, a lot of us look at stuff analytics or whatever. Because I mean, it's just human nature. But don't I don't know. At least like if I were to give you, and I know you're not asking for no, it, yeah, but I, would I, ask, if I, I was already, gonna ask for some yeah. advice for, from you guys. So yeah, go ahead. If I were, if I were to give you advice, bro, just like you're handling it like perfectly. Like you're 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 consistent, Appreciate which is that. something we struggled with and it was more so of just kind of like our situation of how the content was like we had a you know our business partner helping us edit and we were relying on that so the fact that you're already taking that initiative and shooting the content and doing that yourself like that's going to go a long way because you're obviously controlling it obviously at some point you don't want to edit forever but you know you got to do it for now yeah let's keep doing that um and keep doing this uh, stuff bro like traveling meeting people uh, getting on other people's podcasts, you know, putting your name out there, connecting. You never know who knows who, exactly. um, which is, you know, me and Carlos talk about that, like treat everyone the same. You just never know what, what opportunities you can hinder from yourself and um, just keep going, bro. Cause I mean, a lot of people aren't doing content. They're not trying to shoot stuff and that's okay. Like they don't have to, but if you really believe in it, like don't ever give up because I know I know there's times where you're like fuck, bro. I, I gotta go shoot this Absolutely. podcast and Absolutely. like I might post it and it's gonna get like ten views and stuff. But you know like that's the journey that makes it so beautiful. So Absolutely. just just keep doing what you're doing, bro. You're you're already like if I were I wish I was where you were at 22, like just appreciate from like that, your man. mindset and the way you like look at life. So yeah, it's I really dope. appreciate that, yeah. guys. Yeah. I appreciate you guys having me, man. It's of been really fun. Of um, course. Yeah, it's been really fun, man. Yeah. So we're going to do this again, bro. I'll, I'll, oh, absolutely. I'll try to come out here maybe later this year. Yeah, so. let's do yeah. it, bro. We'll, we'll be looking forward to it. Um, how often do you shoot? I try to do one one a week. One so week. I like, usually post it on Fridays. Yeah. So that's what, that's that's what we, we both do. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah I've do. been I've been I've been checking out your stuff. I'm gonna do better by like I'm gonna throw it in rotation more. But I've yeah, listened to a few. That, yeah. Man. yeah, yeah. Last, got, got to support, bro. Got yeah. To. Last week uh, had some things that came up. And I just did one myself. So I was like, fuck it. I, I, instead of not got doing to. it, I was like, I'm See, just gonna do one myself. That, that's what you got to do, bro. Yeah. And at least do something. But that's just that that shows that you're holding yourself accountable as well, and that goes a long way. Even though it's like that small moment of time. That still goes a long yeah, way. Yeah. Um, but, I mean, I know you just asked that, but it, maybe before we hit this off, anything else you got for us? Or you want to I'm shout good, anybody man. out or anything? Uh, no, I'm good, man. If you guys, if anybody wants to follow me, it's cute. Yeah, what's yeah, your yeah, we're gonna, we're, yeah. yeah, I was going to ask you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, but no, I'm good, man. It was yeah. a great conversation. So yeah, thank, I had yeah. Fun. thank you guys It was a pleasure. Again. Thank you, bro. Thank yeah. you again for taking time and today, um, coming on here. And, and just I know that you live far and you didn't have to come this way. And I'm assuming you Ubered. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Spend money, come out. So hey, it means yeah. a lot. Yeah, absolutely. Um, more than you know. Um, but they can find you everywhere at Cade Rector Fit. C A D E R E C T O R F I T. And, and then, then Real Fit Podcast. Real Fit Podcast. Yeah, Real Fit and that's going to be on all socials or all just socials, all socials. Yeah. Okay, yes, I have everything on the screen and whatnot. Appreciate um, it. But go give him, a, go give him a, a listen, go give him a view, uh, check out his Instagram, and whatnot. Got good stuff going on over there. Um, maybe you'll see him more when he moves down. You yeah. Know? yeah. Uh, got yeah, good man. energy, good guy, good kid. I appreciate you for yes, for uh, coming on here for real. Yeah. But that'll do it for your boys over here at Pinnated. We'll catch y'all guys next time. Peace. Peace. Peace.